Welcome to a bonus content edition of Locked On Ravens doing a 2024 Baltimore Ravens NFL Draft Primer. Of course, I am Kevin Ostriker, your host of Locked On Ravens, and we are here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video on YouTube, as this is actually a video exclusive. Now we do audio form as well for almost everything else, but we do these little things as well that are for video only. So be sure to, again, subscribe not only in video form, but also in audio form too. And we're talking NFL Draft today, doing a short video just to encapsulate everything we've really talked about on this show over the course of the last couple of months. And that is the Ravens 2024 NFL Draft. We are eight days away. Draft is next Thursday. So we're gearing up. And as I've said, it's really snuck up on us 1,000%. But Baltimore with nine picks, Starting off with that first rounder at number 30. There's been plenty of conversation about what Baltimore could do with that pick. Would they trade up? Would they trade down? Or would they just stick and pick? I think there are possibilities for all three of those scenarios. But in my opinion, if I had to give you what I predict, I'm probably going drafting a guy at 30 or trading back. So let's first get into the team needs. We've talked about this a ton on our episodes of Locked On Ravens, and things have changed over the course of the last couple of months, especially once free agency started. But according to everybody, myself included, the biggest need has to be the offensive line. Baltimore lost starters on three of those positions of the five, obviously left guard with John Simpson, right guard with Kevin Zeitler, and of course, right tackle with Morgan Moses. So really, in my opinion, going to have to be looking heavy into the offensive line class. And luckily, it is a good year to need an offensive lineman, particularly at tackle. There are anywhere from six to eight first round prospects who could go in Baltimore will probably have, you know, they're not going to have the choice of the top, top guys, but there may be as a potential player that falls to them. Now, if they don't take a tackle in the first round, there are still a couple of other needs. I think I'd be okay with them taking wide receiver is definitely one of them. There are plenty of quality wide receivers. Again, you're not going to go get the big three in terms of a Marvin Harrison jr or a guy like Malik Neighbors or Romo Dunze, but you still have other options there. Corner is also another sneaky one. They're not going to be in the range of some of the top guys, but maybe a Kool-Aid McKintree from Alabama could be an option there. Edge is one that's interesting. The Kyle Van Noy re-signing, it kind of pushes that down the list a lot for me, but we could still see them take, you know, does Chop Robinson fall? That's a player that they could potentially look at. They're not going to be in Dallas Turner range. There are probably, I think, four first round edge guys. A lot of people have as consensus and Chop Robinson is the one that is the most likely to potentially fall to Baltimore there. Other than that, though, there are a couple of sneaky needs. and, And by that, I mean needs that they shouldn't take in the first round, but options for later rounds running back is one especially with Keaton Mitchell still recovering they did sign Derrick Henry but with Keaton Mitchell still recovering there is an opportunity especially early in the season for maybe a mid to late round running back to take over that role until Mitchell comes back you could also look at even inside linebacker where the Ravens I don't think are just going to hand the starting job to Trenton Sims and I think that's how it goes by the time the season is over but I wouldn't be shocked if Baltimore even for special teams value drafts an inside linebacker Safety is another one where Geno Stone departs in free agency. So they could look to draft a safety. Personally, I think Ardarius Washington is is fine kind of filling that role. But we'll see what Baltimore ends up doing at those couple of positions as well. And then one that I think not a lot of people are talking about is backup quarterback. Tyler Huntley goes to the Cleveland Browns. They did bring in Malik Cunningham in the middle of the year last year. But right now, according to John Harbaugh, it's Josh Johnson ahead of Malik Cunningham, which is understandable. Cunningham has a lot of development to do and they're going to try him out. I think at wide receiver as well, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, Joe Milton, for example, is, is that an option that Baltimore could look at, but some players I have my eye on personally, and we'll do, we'll do all three phases. We'll do first round day two, and then day three first round. I think one of my favorites in this class and, you know, have some realistic options and some not so realistic options, but Troy Fontana was someone that, I love coming out of Washington. He is definitely not going to be there when Baltimore picks at 30. I don't expect a big fall from him either, but that's the type of player I'm kind of looking at. 
I think Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma could be a really solid option. And there are a bunch of other players as well. Fuaga out of Oregon State is one. Mims out of Georgia is another. There are really good offensive linemen. Now, they're not going to be anywhere near Joe Alt territory. He's going top 10, and it's not even close. And, and Falashano as well, He that, you know, no chance. But I think a Tyler Guyton is a realistic option. You can plug and play him at right tackle, or if you maybe want to use him as a left tackle replacement for Ronnie Stanley, possibly next year, you could. But he's somebody that I expect to be there for Baltimore at 30, and I would not be shocked if he is taken there. Now, wide receivers, a lot of people... Keon Coleman's a love-hate relationship for a lot of people. Some people love him, other people don't. Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU is my top potential realistic target. I think he goes before 30, but you know, there's a chance maybe he falls to 25 and does Baltimore make that move. A.D. Mitchell out of Texas is another guy a lot of people like, and that could be an option. And then corner-wise in the first round, again, I mentioned that Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama is kind of the guy that is the most realistic to fall to 30 and someone I'd be okay with Baltimore taking there. Chop Robinson, Edge, another guy there. Second rounders, Patrick Paul out of Houston is someone that could go to Baltimore maybe at 62 wide receiver wise. Xavier Leggett is someone that, again, I don't think he falls to 62. But maybe if Baltimore trades back, they could use him with one of the, they could take him with one of the second round picks. And then I think. When you're talking about corners, there are a lot of players in that second to third round tier. Kyrie Jackson is one of my favorite players in all of the draft out of Oregon. Renardo Green out of Florida State is somebody. Ennis Rakestraw Jr. from Missouri is another one. There are quality corners. So that's why I think to me, I'd rather take, if Kule, especially if Kool-Aid McKinstry isn't there, I'd rather take an offensive lineman or even a wide receiver. And then you can get one of these quality outside guys in the second or third round. So that to me is, is interesting. Then day three, the Ravens, they have a bunch of picks in the 200s. They have three right now there, but I could see them anyway, taking multiple offensive linemen, multiple corners. I could see that happening. I don't think multiple wide receivers this time, especially because they just signed Deontay Hardy, but Running back wise, you look at players, you know, Braylon Allen, Blake Corum, Jalen Wright. Those are all guys that are probably going to be fourth rounders, maybe third rounders, but fourth rounders. And then you look at some of the later round guys, as a Garendo, Kimani Vidal. There are a bunch there. Jacob Monk is an offensive lineman. I, I like him a lot. Frank Crum out of, out of Wyoming. He's another one. So there are all three days, really quality players that Baltimore could get. Now, should they trade up or should they trade down? To me, I would prefer them to trade down than trade up. Baltimore already has nine picks. That's a decent amount. But I still think that if they were to trade back into the early 30s still, so you trade from 30 to 34, 30 to 33, 30 to 36, the Ravens would probably still have a couple of players that they would draft at 30 in that 33 to 36 range. And I also think that they could pick up an extra top 100 pick or maybe some 2025 draft capital. Eric Acosta during the pre-draft press conference for the Ravens made it clear that running back is, is a target right now. Cornerback's a target right now. Offensive line is a target right now. So they have a lot of needs they have to fill, especially with how many guys they actually lost this offseason in free agency. So I think Eric Acosta has been very vocal about saying that getting as many swings as you can in the draft is a good thing. So I'm excited for that. Now, in terms of teams that are ahead of the Ravens that could take a guy that they want, I think Buffalo could potentially, it seems like they're going wide receiver 1,000% after trading Stephon Diggs. Maybe they take a wide receiver. I don't know what the deal could be with Detroit. Maybe they take a corner. Their offensive line is set right now. They're not a threat for one of the offensive linemen, especially because they signed Kevin Zeitler. So <laughs> you don't need an offensive lineman there. But Maybe they take a corner and that's somebody, especially with the whole Cam Sutton thing, it, it's it's possible that they do that. Other than that, though, I mean, I think some of the AFC North rivals, actually, Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, now they're ahead of Baltimore and by a pretty wide margin, but Cincinnati could maybe take an offensive lineman. I feel like Pittsburgh could also take one. So really interesting to see how this draft board is going to un unfold. And we're not going to really know what happens until we're actually there in the moment again. Eight days away right now till the 2024 
NFL Draft. And if you're watching live right now, you'll be sent to the debut of the 2024 Locked On NFL Mock Draft presented by LinkedIn on our Locked On Today Sports Channel or Locked On Sports Today 24-7 live streaming feed. If you're watching this after the fact, you'll be able to catch the episode in which the Ravens make their first pick right here on Locked On Ravens on Thursday, April 18th. You can get every episode of the 2024 Locked On NFL Mock Draft on Locked On NFL Draft on Thursday, April 18th, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Really appreciate everybody for tuning in. We'll see you right back here soon on Locked On Ravens, of course, with our regular episodes talking Ravens football. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, follow along in audio form. I'll see you right back here soon on Locked On Ravens.